Good evening all. Rush Douglas 222 again. I've just had four hours sleep. It's midnight. I'm about to drive down to the harbour and do a little bit of filming for you. My camera for the night is the Pard 008 LRF. I'm just going to give you a comparative uh, review of four different IR sources filmed using the Pard. The baby tonight is the Ludicrous Lumens 850 nanometers or 940 nanometers, 500 milliwatt IR torch. And how do you know it's an IR torch? It's got a warning sticker. Other suppliers, please take note. I love seeing warning stickers on IR torches. And out of the four I've got, um, yeah, this is the only visible yellow warning sticker. Both lenses, this is a, a times two lens to sort of focus the beam. And it's very slick, easily adjustable for narrowing or widening the beam. Uh, so that's a times two lens, and this is a times three lens. Uh, very quickly, easily interchangeable. The times three lens allows you to really narrow things down to focus for really long range shots. Oh, and I'll put the link down below to the Ludicrous Lumens web website. So I think their website mentions that 90% of users, the times two lens will be all they need. The other thing I have here, thanks to Bruce, thanks again Bruce, is this says 940 on the side. That little tiny dot in the center is the IR source and this allows you with the one IR torch to change the wavelength from 850 nanometers to 940. So I'm going to show you how both wavelengths of light look through the pad. You do need a pair of needle nose pliers. There's two small holes in the brass enclosure. You need a, a twist of the, the pliers just to get this rotating. And a tip from Bruce is take the battery out first because that relieves the pressure on the spring at the back of the pill. By the way, night vision jargon, obviously you need, if you're into your night vision or you get into your night vision, you need to join the UK Night Vision Forum. I'll put a link to that down below. If you, if you read um, shooting magazines, you'll see that different weights of bullet for different ballistic properties and trajectories and such like are called pills. Bulbs for IR devices are also called pills. So this is a 940 nanometer pill, with 940 being the slightly less efficient wavelength for most night vision devices, but it's more covert. So you'll not get a telltale red glow from the end of the lens that can spook some prey if, they're, if the prey is speci especially lamp shy. I'll be changing from the 850 that's in here to this 940 uh, nanometer pill at some point when I'm in the car down at the harbour. What else have I got to show you? I'll move the camera around and I'll show you properly what, what we're going to be looking at tonight. At the cheap end of the spectrum, this is the Tracer LED rate IR. 400 meter beam, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, this is the 850 nanometer version. All these IR sources take the same 18650 battery, which is very helpful for charging everything up before tonight for testing. So that, and that's the Tracer LED ray version. So as usual, through the wonders of digital cameras, uh, the digital camera tells us whether it's on or not, and f faint, medium, and high, as you've seen in my other videos. That's the Tracer LED ray. IR torch. This is no longer available unless you get one second hand. We've got the precisionnightvision.com. This is the VCSEL, uh, Vertical Cavity Surface Emitting Laser, IR Illuminator. And this movement here, that's to pull the collar out to narrow the beam, pull it back to spread the beam. We've got another 850 nanometer IR torch, the Black Sun Dark Engine from the Night Vision store. Thanks to Clive Ward. Thanks again. It's an on-off click, three power touch uh, control. And again, unfortunately, none of these IR illuminators have a light that comes on even discreetly to let you know when the, the fell is on. So you need your mobile phone to tell you when things are on. 25 mil tube. And lastly, we have the Ludicrous Lumens Wraith Night Saber. Um, again, a 25 millimeter body. Right, so just to show you close up, because it's the, it's, I can, I can record with any of these tomorrow, but this is going back tomorrow, to back to Bruce. So we have the Class 3B warning, avoid exposure to beam, warning, invisible laser radiation, standard yellow sticker. 
the IR Touch. It's a, quite a solid body. We've got the battery compartment. Bruce has got the additional end cap. So if I, there's a, there's a, there's this audible click and you can see this tiny little beam and that's palm of my hand, as well as the click on off. You've also got the, you can feel tiny, tiny little stops, rotary dimmer control. That's very useful. Something I love to see on IR torches. Just a shame that there's nothing, I can see at the moment at least, there's nothing lighting up to show us when the torch is on. Apart from, yeah, apart from the mobile phone, of course. So, ludicrous lumens. The lenses, this is the times two lens and the, the bigger times three lens. They've both got lens caps on saying, do not open in daylight because, and there's a pinhole because these lenses, Bruce has explained to me, the lenses have previously been used in night vision devices. So we've got rubber rubber lens cap, no, no lanyard, but there's a, there's a pinhole for a lanyard on it. Very nice smooth movement for focusing the beam. And then when you turn it all the way anti-clockwise, and there's a little bit of resistance. And then the head unscrews completely. So there's the... IR pill. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. In focus. Right. So we have the ludicrous lumens wraith. We have the times two head, the times three head for longer ranges. Basically, an all-in-one device. You've got the, the times three head is an option. The times two head is standard, I believe. And you've got options of having both 850 nanometers and 940 nanometers. This is the custom rifle scopes or custom hunting as it is now. The adjustable mount. So we have finger adjustment for adjusting the up down beam and a small wheel here at the back for adjusting it horizontal angle one other thing to note is this is a 30 millimeter clamp so i have a standard split ring a bit like you would have to reduce 30 mil scope tubes down to 25 mil for scope mounts this is a quite a deep one that i use for this purpose with this i'll be mounting in each of the four IR torches in turn in the mount. And as you'll have seen before in my video quite a while ago, I changed the nut here for a capstan headed quick release nut. And that just makes things a bit more user friendly, especially because you're naturally going to be using these and these torches in the dark. And I'm about, literally about to jump in the car and go down to the harbour because it's now 25 past midnight. Sunrise is at 4 a.m. and it is as dark as it's going to get, I think, now. But fortunately, it's overcast as well. So not the great time of year to do this because the summer solstice was just two days ago. I picked my moments, don't I? So I'm, I'm planning to use all five IR sources, including the PARDS onboard IR. I plan to use them all at 70, 190, 225 and 400 meters out at the uh, harbour at the usual spots we've seen in previous videos and just show you how everything compares. Okay. So I've got the, the PARD 008 LRF. And the other thing I'm going to do is I've got my handy, wherever it is, handy 20p coin. So I'm going to take off the memory card cover on the pad because thankfully it's a dry night. Only when the memory card slot cover is off will the pad record audio through the open body because the IPX rating is, is so good that uh, it's, the unit is sealed no external microphone so i'm gonna be doing this handheld um and use my rucksack as a bit of a cover to so scratch the roof of the car hopefully you'll be able to hear the pards microphone i'll be three different ranges 60 meters sort of 190 and 400 meters with the onboard ir flood and focus got three strengths so i'll show you all three strengths and then I'll switch the onboard IR off and I'll put on the Tracer LED Ray IR. F try focusing that, different strengths. It's probably going to be the, the, the worst performing of, of all, all the IR sources I've got tonight, but we'll see how it looks. Uh, and just to show you, I'll just swivel this round, this camera mount, just to try and show you how things look without an IR torch. Then camera's pointing, that's the quarter mile range. And then back round to me. Hello. 
Right, so this is me recording on the Pod W LRF and drainy as hell because I've got no IR on. You can make out light reflecting off some yacht over there. Steady as I can. There's the litter vein. Uh, for those who haven't watched the previous video, but with the pulsars being compared. Yep, yeah, bin's about 69 to 70 metres away. I'll pop this onto night vision mode. Right, and then if I repeat the range finding, you'll see the IR splash. Let's get the focus a bit better. It's no IR, so pop IR on level 1. And obviously I have to change focus anyway, because IR light, there we go, there's a little bit. IR light focuses at a different position to conventional light. So whenever you switch the day-night scope from daytime to nighttime, you've got to refocus. So this is the onboard IR. Sorry this is wobbly, I've not got a tripod for this yet. So that's the pad on the flood beam. And if I narrow it down, right. So that's the effect of, on the IR1, but that's the effect of focusing the beam slightly, narrowing it down. So, 70 meters, not bad visibility, and if there were any bunnies out there, then uh, you'd take shots quite easily, up to that range with this much illumination. Looking over to the left, these cliffs here, not very distinct I'm afraid, because they're just stone cliffs, that's 190 meters, and even though it's focused, the IR is struggling a bit there. And then over here, this is really going to make it struggle. You can see the outline of the cliffs there. So that, if I come to the right slightly, that's 400 metres. Not great. But then again, this is only IR1. So let's pop it up to IR2. And that's better. IR3, we are looking at a quarter of a mile here, so I'll pop it up to IR3. And yeah, there's not much of a difference there. I'm not going to bother zooming up to 13 mag, this is a 6.5 base mag. Oh, and I see the battery is down to 1 bar. I better change the battery in case I'm getting recorded interference. Back in a sec. IR full power, pad IR is focused, but 400 metres, it's beyond the reach of the pad. Uh, whereas, I'm coming back over here, and 70 metres, perfectly usable. I'm going to switch off the PARDS IR. First of all, switch to the Tracer LED Ray. Okay, so here we are, Tracer LED Ray. That's on level 1, 70 metres. That's on medium. And that's on high. So, that's it's actually acceptable. And let's just see, let's see where the beam is uh, before I forget. Rotate the head of the IR. And let's go clockwise. Yes, it's getting brighter, that's a lot crisper. Oh, and there's a bit of wobble in the head of the IR there, so that's interesting. I didn't, wasn't aware this gets that loose. So, little bin at 70 metres, this is the Tracer LED Ray IR on full power. And if I look to the left, these are 190 metre cliffs. And there's the shoreline. And then out to 400 metres. Yeah, no, not great. Although it's advertised as a 400 meter IR torch, it's obviously not fantastic at that range. Pretty grimy, but if there was a fox out there, you'd see eye shine, I think, for sure. So let's swap IR and put the Precision Night Vision VCSEL laser on. Let's pop that on and uh, do the same test again. IR mode, but no IR on. Focusing, there we go. Uh, okay, right, it's off to one side, so twiddle the dial. Yep. So that's the vertical corrected, and there we go, horizontal corrected as well. Okay, let's hold this with both hands, keep it steady. Oh, and there's a tat. So I fully focused it. If I pull the, the collar back a bit, spread the beam a bit. There's a little bit at 70 meters. 
to see what IR power we're on, let's look out to 400 meters, quarter of a mile, and narrow things down. So you can see more detail of the cliffs. I'm looking out to 400 meters, and there's a there's a shadowing to the left of the lens. I'm not sure. So that's the precisionlightvision.com PNV laser. Let's just check the alignment a bit. There we go. And vertical alignment, and let's check horizontal. Okay, so that's as good as it's going to get. Yeah, this is definitely better at the 190 meter cliffs than it is at 400 meters. But I think that'll change when I change up to the uh, higher spec Black Sun Dark Engine and then the Ludicrous Lumens. But you can see that the Precision Night Vision.com uh, Illuminator perfectly, perfectly good at 70 meters. Excellent visibility. I think I would see eye shine out to a couple of hundred meters. Try and keep things steady as I can. So this is Black Sun Dark Engine IR, 850 nanometers. This is on its lowest power level and this is on flood. If I tighten that beam up, turn the collar anti-clockwise, you can see you can start to see the, the square shape of the uh, VCSEL emitters and the reflective label on the bin saying litter is getting uh, blown out. So right, back off, make it slightly wider angle. Yep, yeah, that's perfectly usable. If I put it up a power level, to medium, it's getting quite bright, and up to maximum. So let's look at 190 meters. Change the focus slightly. Let's look out to 400 meters. Again, it's difficult with all these uh, IR torches. Difficult to tell what power level you're on. Uh, increase the power a bit, and right now I can get it better focused on that grass, there we go, so that grass is 400 meters away, the cliffs, right down to the water's edge, that's the beam fully widened, if I narrow down the beam, you can see, you can now start to see the roughly square shape of the uh, illuminated beam, well it's a quarter of a mile, I mean the you quite happily see a fox at that range. Because the uh, beam is brighter, obviously the periphery is getting blacked out. Let's widen it slightly. Cliffs at a quarter of a mile. Foliage at the top. Gorse and fence posts. Yeah, that's on maximum power now. Widen the beam up a little bit. Prove to the distance. Oh, 280, 300. Ah, it's obviously left over, it's 400 meters. Right, so this is a ludicrous lumens wraith. I've got the IR on, but it's an aligned, but it's very low. If I start to just turn it up. There's the bin at 70 meters litter. Um, I've got the collar. I can focus down the beam. Ah, right, right down so you see the pixels. So now I can, my left hand, loosen the custom hunting mount. If I turn this round, turn the body. There we go. That's how I like it. Tighten that up again. With an adjustable bracket, I can center the beam, and then widen it out. Right, that's fully wide angle right now. Let's get the pad focus better. Yep, there we go. Uh, so 70 meters, that's excellent. Obviously, I can narrow it 
right down it and really really lighten things up but then obviously periphery is blacked out looking at the cliffs at 190 meters let's turn it up a bit yep, other way anti-clockwise and there we have cliff top of course and let's see the range 200 meters look at the cliff face if I look further out 400 meters turn this eye out further up it's up on full so anti-clockwise turns the power down clockwise turns it up anti-clockwise spreads the beam or clockwise narrows it right down so basically on the, the dimmer control righty tighty and on the focus control righty tighty so the only improvement I would love to see on this is faint LED on off light but with the adjustable mount I can center things like so a bit closer. Not difficult to get reflection of a, sea, a seagull bobbing in the water, but you can see eye shine there. Oh, there's something there. Let's see eye shine below the cliff edge. Seventy odd meters. Righty tighty, let's focus the IR in. Right. Let's try it with the 940 nanometers. Okay, recording again. The ludicrous lumens wraith is off, let's pop it on. And anti-clockwise, turn it down a bit. It took me just two or three minutes sitting on the passenger seat there. Take the two times head of the wraith off, unscrew the 850 nanometer pill after first loosening the battery compartment to take the pressure off, and then take that out, screw in the 940 nanometer pill, tighten it up a little touch with the needle nose pliers, pop the head back on, battery back in, battery compartment back on. So just two or three minutes, it's not bad at all. So this is 70 meters. This is the 940 nanometer pill. Let's turn it off. Ah, interesting. Ah, yeah, let's center it better. So that's the IR centered on full power. And let's narrow the beam down a bit. Okay. Again, you can go all the way to the point where you see the Vixels. And they're not quite orthogonal, but they're near enough for my OCD. So that's when it's focused in here, that's very crisp, very clear, but obviously the periphery is lost. But that's so that's 940 nanometers. This is the more covert of the two wavelengths. There'll be virtually no red glow visible from that bin looking back this way a rabbit or a fox or whatever you're after then there'd be almost no indication that this IR was on I focus it down, I mean that is pretty bright widen it out a bit look over to the cliffs at where are we? 180 meters uh, up to the cliff top the cliffs look kind of out of focus, but it's stone, obviously, so uh, up to the top, and there's the bushes. Over here to the left. Now that's getting looking a lot dimmer. So let's turn up the power on the array. And let's focus it in a bit. 
Right, so back off from the Vixels. Yeah, I'd say the focus seems slightly less crisp with a 940. I've got that turned up all the way. Going out to the full quarter mile definitely seems dimmer and trying to break it up and that just gets to the point where you see the pixels so that's no good. So it is it is a reduced range but the fact that you've got both options available with the Wraith is great. I love the dimmer control and the on-off. It's less than 200 meters. Um, Anti-clockwise dim it down, clockwise brighten it up, clockwise with the collar, focus the beam, but you lose the periphery. So I'm loving the custom hunting mount that I can finger adjust the direction of the torch beam horizontally and vertically. I've shown you that you can, with these Vixel torches, or with LEDs indeed as well, IR torches, you can rotate the body to make the beam horizontal or more diamond shaped, for your preference. This 940 nanometers IR source is, it's definitely less effective than the 850, but of course you've got the benefit that it's covert and I'm loving the on off switch, I'm loving the, the flexibility of the two different heads, the two different wavelengths, on off switch and the intensity control is great. All we're missing is faint visible LED indicator to let us know when it's on. Great modular design with the two different pills, the two different heads.